The God Machine by Michael J. Bowler A grieving boy who recently lost his mother tries to contact her through an antique machine and accidentally unleashes a deadly interdimensional being on San Francisco. A being that will stop at nothing to gain control of the boy who summoned it. 12-year-old Benny Washington is grieving the loss of his Chinese mother from cancer and feels distant from his African-American father due to his passion for ballet. When a device called the God Machine is mistakenly delivered to Benny's home, he hopes it will let him speak to his deceased mother one last time. With best friend and fellow dancer Peter Hall, Peter's teenage sister Emma, and a Chinese science whiz from her class named Freeman, Benny plugs in the God Machine and links it to the Monster Hunter Go video game his dad's company created. When Benny attempts communication, a mishappen being reaches out to grab Benny by the head. Peter pulls Benny free. The creature darts into Benny's computer, appearing within the game. The boys unplug the machine and the computer. Benny's dad, Nicholas, and Mr. Yang, retired game designer and the intended recipient of the God Machine, help the kids track the creature using the game's mobile version. Nicholas drives to a busy intersection. A giant video screen demonstrates the game. The creature sees Benny in the crowd and leaps out of the screen. Pandemonium ensues. Detective Amy Wong enters the scene as Nicholas orders Emma and Freeman to get the boys to safety. Amy shoots the creature, but the bullets have little effect. Benny and the other kids leap onto a cable car. A chase results, with the creature randomly grabbing people by the head along the way. Amy, Nicholas, and Yang pursue in Amy's SUV. The creature leaps atop the cable car, trying to get at Benny inside, damaging the brakes at the top of a steep hill. The cable car operator gets the kids to safety just before the car plunges down the hill. The creature, unhurt, starts up the street toward Benny. Amy shoots it, but there's no effect. When a bullet strikes the cable car tracks and electrifies the creature, it shrinks in size and disappears down through the tracks. Back at police headquarters, Freeman surmises that this interdimensional creature is draining people of their brainwaves when it grabs them, and Yang agrees. A trap is set, using Benny as bait. The plan backfires when the creature grabs Peter after he pushes Benny out of its path. Under a barrage of bullets, it takes off with Peter. Back at the house, Benny contacts the creature through his phone. He agrees to trade himself for Peter. The kids sneak out with the god machine, leaving the adults scrambling to follow. In Golden Gate Park, Benny plugs in the god machine and pours water on the ground. Peter appears controlled by the creature. Using Peter's voice, it explains that it needs Benny because their brainwaves match. It wants to remain in this dimension, and Benny is the key. The creature refuses to let Benny say goodbye to Peter, but when Benny threatens to shove an ice pick into his brain, the creature leaves Peter and speeds toward Benny. Benny steps into the puddle of water with bare feet. The creature enters his body as he grabs the metal arms of the god machine and electrocutes himself. Freeman calls 911. Peter performs CPR on Benny. Benny finds himself in a void with his mother. He apologizes for not being there when she died, and she promises that her love will never die. By the time Benny's heart restarts, Nicholas, Amy, Peter's parents, and Yang have arrived. Roger Hall expresses pride in Peter for saving Benny and Nicholas assures Benny he loves him no matter what. In the dressing room after performing The Nutcracker, garnering genuine praise from his dad, Benny tells Peter he has yet another headache. When he looks into the mirror, he sees electricity arcing across his irises.